Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to work on a reel that our, one of our viewers sent in, Lance. He sent me a, uh, a Daiwa BG90 for a tuna. And overall the reel is clean. It's, uh, it's a nice reel. It's on the upper end of the Daiwa series. It's not the current line, uh, but the BG90 has stood the test of time. Very similar to a, uh, a Penn Spin Fisher or uh, uh, some Shimano uh, reels. The uh, BG90 is a large reel. It holds 275 yards of 25 pound test. It's a saltwater reel by design. This one's very clean. We're just going to go ahead and take it apart. We're going to grease it, lube it. I'll show you how it's made, how to service this. And uh, if you have one of these, follow along. You can uh, do the uh, servicing on your reel. If you don't, uh, if you're thinking about buying one, it'll give you uh, the opportunity to see how these are made and the quality of the parts. So I like to start by taking the handle off, and the handle has uh, got a, a, a through screw. So we start by taking that screw out of the handle. And uh, this is a good time to tell you, uh, as you'll watch through this video here, that uh, I wear a protective glove on my non-working hand. I'd like to wear a glove on both, but uh, I have trouble with small parts and a, uh, and a latex glove. But uh, if, you, uh, if you don't have that kind of trouble, wear them on both hands. Uh, but I take that through screw out. Uh, you'll also see that I just threw it into a parts bucket. My parts bucket is nothing more than the bottom of a milk jug. But uh, I would encourage you to use a parts tray as you're working on wheels so you know where to find the pieces and parts. Small ones in particular are, are easy to knock off of a workbench. So uh, go ahead and... Uh, Put them in the tray so that as you go to reassemble, you'll be able to find them. I also like to take the through screw and put it right back into the handle. That way I don't have to search high and low for it uh, in that bucket. Once I do that, I'm going to remove the spool. So on the regular servicing of a spool, you're going to do the drags, and we'll get to the drags in a little bit. But right now I want to get this shaft out of here so that we can go underneath the rotor and make sure that that's lubed as well. Take off the, the, the drag knob, take off the spool. And then let's go underneath to the um, gear side assembly. We're going to take that off. That has three side plate screws in it. Now some folks ask, uh, you know, can I use a mechanical screwdriver to remove and replace the uh, screws? And, and I, I kind of am against it, but then again, I like working with my hands. Uh, my answer is if you're going to use it, uh, use it on the outbound rather than the inbound. If you're going to use it on the inbound, these screwdrivers have a lot of torque. So stop short of fully tightening that screw down and, and make the last few turns by hand, uh, if at all possible. And uh, that way you don't risk damaging that side plate either by cracking it or over torquing it and warping it and so on. All right, they had three screws. I laid them out on my desk first because I want to make sure they're the same screws. Sometimes manufacturers use different size or different length screws. Uh, so if that's the case, you want to pay attention as you're taking them out to find out which screw belongs uh, where. Okay, taking that apart, I'm going to pull the side plate out and you're going to see that this is a uh, three ball bearing reel, two on the side, one up top, and that answers the question that I get frequently, which is how many ball bearings is optimal for a reel, and my answer always is that you need the three. You need one on each side of the main drive, and you need one up top under the rotor. The rest of them make life easier, but are not necessary. All right, I'm going to pull this bearing off, and I'm going to put that right back into the side plate. And I'm going to oil that bearing. I oil bearings, so I'm going to give that a good bath of oil. I use Reel-X, which is a, an oil designed for fishing reels. Um, a lot of times you'll get uh, oils that have come from the manufacturer. That's fine. Uh, just make sure that uh, uh, the oil is used on the bearings. My experience there is if you use blue grease on the bearings, sometimes that traps contaminants and it makes the, um, the bearing operate poorly. Okay, I took the set screw out of the cross wind block and now I'm going to remove the, uh, the spool shaft. I'm gonna give that a good wipe down here. And uh, I'm just seeing a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of dirt. That's okay. Uh, we'll just re, uh, re-lube this when we go to reinstall. So into the parts bucket it goes and now I can pull that main gear out. The reason you can't uh, pull the main gear out without taking the shaft is the shaft rides in the middle here and that secondary gear, the one that drives the crosswind gear, will block it from being pulled out. So you have to take the shaft out first. 
Okay, the shaft uh, I'm going to look at uh, on the back here looks like uh, we got a little bit of dirty grease in there. We'll go ahead and, and pull that out, clean that up, and we'll go back in and re-lube this. I use a flat bladed screwdriver a lot of times. Uh, sometimes it's a uh, cotton swab like this one, but regardless, just get the old grease out of there when you're re-lubing. And then we can go over and, and use new grease. I use a pen precision reel grease, but any grease that's designed for fishing reels will work. I get the question an awful lot about what, uh, you know, what's the best grease to use, and, and the answer is any manufacturer's grease works fine. Don't use automotive grease, don't use Vaseline, don't use uh, general purpose uh, greases. They don't necessarily align with the specs of, a, uh, of the fishing reels, and uh, they may be too heavy or too light for optimum uh, use uh, on those fishing reels. So go ahead and use the blue greases that are designed for the fishing reel itself. This reel is in clean and good condition. Otherwise, I don't see a lot of evidence of wear in there. The parts are still shiny. There's no scuffing, scraping, or otherwise going on. So this really is just a clean and lube. I'm going to uh, clean up the dirty grease off the cross wind block again. Checking to make sure all the teeth are there and that they're all in good condition. Same thing with the pinion gear up top here. The pinion gear is a nice uh, brass pinion gear. It appear to be high quality metals on the uh, internals. So it, it is a well made reel. It doesn't look like they took any shortcuts here. If I get any complaint about these reels, it's that they have a wobble after use. And I think that's just a design flaw, probably in the balancing of the rotor or perhaps the bale, but that's something that seems to, to affect most of the BG reels for whatever reason, and particularly the larger reels. So uh, if you have one and it's wobbling, know that uh, it comes along with the turf and there's not much that you can do about that. Okay, so we're just going to set these aside for a moment. I'm actually using two parts trays now. And I'm going to go up top here, take the rotor off, show you what's inside here. There's a, uh, this is not an anti, instant anti-reverse reel. This is a, uh, an old dog and, uh, and rotor type of an arrangement. Yep, there's the other ball bearing on the other side of the reel. Um, so we just want to check to make sure that's op operable. Boy, that's a thing there. Take that set screw plate out, and we can get to the nut. The nut is a 14 millimeter nut, and it's it goes on normal, and it's clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. So in this case, we're loosening counterclockwise. Sometimes you'll find that you're pulling and the, and the uh, nut doesn't seem to be loosening, uh, loosening up. Don't force it. Try the reverse because some manufacturers of the reels use that reverse. Okay, we're clean up top. I'm just inspecting the rotor. We're in good condition with that. Notice that there's no trip switch in this rotor. This is the old bang kind of an approach where this slams into the post on the, the reel seat here and that's how the, the, uh, the bale flips very much like the pen spin fisher. Okay, so underneath here we have a uh, simple setup. We have the dog, we have the anti-reverse ratchet, little screw mechanism that, that drives that. I have the, um, the override on here, just want to make sure that works. When I go to reinstall, I always want to make sure that it's uh, set away so that we don't have any problems with uh, hitting that up. And then we have the click ratchet underneath and the bearing under there. So this is all clean. There's no reason to take this apart. I'm going to lube right down the shaft here for the bearing. Now if any of these were broken or broken teeth, you can remove these. There's a series of screws under here holding the bearing. I'm also going to lube underneath on the bearing by coming in through the pinion shaft there <clears throat> and turn it a couple of times to, to make sure, one, that the anti-reverse is working and two, that the the bearing is getting that oil, which it is. And then I'll just finish by putting a little bit more of blue grease onto that pinion shaft. And now we can reset. So we just grab that one bearing out of there that came out. So let's go ahead and put that back into the side plate. Give that a good drink of oil. And again, I'm using Relux oil here. Now we can go reset the main gear, which we've lubed. We've cleaned and lubed. That's going back in next. We're going to put a little bit of lube on the shaft on that main drive just so that it slides easily on that other bearing that's in the side plate. And put the cross wind block in next. And now you're seeing the value of these parts trays. They just simply 
uh, are a good place to locate them. Grab the shaft and again just a light coating of this blue grease here just to make sure that it slides easily. Too much again if, you, if you're using these as a salt water reel or something too much can trap contaminants. So don't go crazy there. We install the router, the rotor. Again, grab that uh, that nut and know that it goes on clockwise because you paid attention when you uh, you took it off. Again, if it goes uh, if it is a reverse thread, you just uh, want to follow that direction. Grab the 14 millimeter nut and tighten that one up. And you go get the uh, locking plate and the locking screw. So that's pretty easy to do there. Easier said than done. Those of you that watch my videos know that I have a little bit of problem with small pieces of parts. And I guess we're at that point in the video. So, so we can do it this way. Try and get it started ahead of schedule here. Okay, there you go. So we'll get that screw in there. That will enable us to put the shaft in. There is the real shaft. So the shaft has got a D kind of a cut. It's not a round shaft. And it also has an indentation. So it only goes one way into that cross wind block. You don't have to spend too much time trying to figure, out, uh, figure that out. You just want to make sure that it mates properly when it goes down below. And you want to grab that uh, the, the set screw that uh, rides in that cross wind block. Get that in there and reseat that. Then we can grab the side plate because we're done on the internals here and we'll go up top and we'll work the drags for this wheel. And remember we gave this a bath of the oil before. We're going to go put that on and we notice when we're taking this off that there's no uh, no difference here in the, uh, the screws so any screw will go in any slot within the side plate. Thank Henry Ford for that and uh, we'll uh, tighten these right up. So the, the BG series is a nice reel. It's very durable. Here on the East Coast we use these for uh, striped bass. We use it for trolling. We use them for bluefish. This reel actually comes from the West Coast. So I'm thinking salmon, uh, Pacific uh, sea bass, and uh, maybe I'll find out what the rest of them are as well. Okay, so this is the internals. All tightened, lubed, ready to go back into operation. Again, if you're using a mechanical screwdriver, stop short of fully tightening these down, and that way you can. Uh, there you go. All right, good with that. Let's go over to the, the last piece then, which is the spool, and we'll go take these drags out, make sure that these drags are serviced properly. So this spool, like many, is held in by a, a uh, clip, spring clip. It's reason they call it spring. Be careful with those if you're servicing your drags. These are Teflon drags. They do not need oil uh, or lubrication. They simply need to be cleaned. And these have a little bit of dirt on them or sand and the like. That's not unusual. The, uh, the spool always is the one that takes the hit in terms of the top side water in that. And there's some sand and some dirt in here as well. You know, I'll go ahead and clean that out with the cotton swab and then I'm just going to finish that with a little bit of a paper towel just to make sure that I've got it all. And then we're going to do the same thing as we reinstall. So we're going to just clean these off. Now, so a Teflon drag essentially has got the same uh, feature function as oil. It's a plastic, it's a polymer. And, and so it's really operating just like it would on an oil, but uh, it still needs to be serviced properly. Okay, these ear drags are the middle one in the stack, so we went Teflon, we did put a metal piece in. Now we're putting the second Teflon drag and then the eared washer, and clean off the top. They feel a little bit of a sandy grit to them, maybe salt. Uh, put that one in, then the last one back in is the, the top metal drag, and again, just make sure they're clean. If, if these uh, had some oxidation on them, had some built up corrosion and the like, you could use some steel wool to buff it out. Uh, you could use a metal cleaner. Uh, in this case, these are clean and just fine. 
and nothing more needs to be done there. So uh, in the course of what, 15 minutes maybe here, we've been able to open up the reel, lubricate it, and uh, we're ready to reinstall. Put that drag knob on. And we're ready to put this one back out fishing. So it's nothing that's, uh, it's nothing that's overwhelming. Uh, if you're considering doing it yourself, it's certainly something that, that you can follow the steps to go do. It's not overwhelming at all. It's a practice that should be done. Folks ask me how frequently it should be done, and I like to say that you know it all depends on how how hard you're fishing the reels. If this is your daily driver and you're fishing it, you know every week over the summer, then uh, you probably want to start the season by servicing it. Figure a midpoint in the season and go go ahead and service it again, and uh, then make sure it's got a thorough cleaning uh, before you store it for the winter. If you're in one of these lucky locations where you can fish it year-round, then I would say uh, every three or four months is a good idea in terms of just making sure that the reel is kept clean and uh, that it's properly lubricated. If that's the case, it's going to last you a lifetime. It'll always do what, what you want to do. And as we've seen from the quality of materials in this reel, uh, they're built to last. So we've got a nice reel, nice and smooth. It's got that little classic wobble to it, which uh, kind of annoys me a little bit. But again, under pressure, uh, when you've got tight line in here, it's not, not as noticeable when you're cranking away, but uh, just to the purest. So that's the Daiwa Black Gold 90. It's a nice reel. If you have one, go ahead and take the steps to service it and keep it clean. It'll keep you going for a long time. If you're thinking about buying one, you've seen the quality of the components in here. And I would encourage you, if you find one that, uh, that you like, go ahead and pick it up because it is uh, it's pretty much bulletproof. So with that, I'm going to thank you for viewing the video. Uh, Lance, it'll be back on its way pretty soon. Uh, but thanks for, uh, for contacting me. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And uh, wish you good fishing.